Uh, but I thought the first thing I'd do is put on this pulley. I already got this prepped uh, earlier, so I just need my little washer. Where did that washer go? That's for, That's for this. I'm missing a four millimeter washer. Beautiful. Oh, right here. Oh, good. Okay, got to get the washer on there because we want this pulley to spin. There's just one threaded location for that. I'm going to back that off till it spins real nice. You can over compress that, so be careful. Anyway, so that's good. Now these carriages are already on there, so I'm going to put this on, but before I do, really interesting how Brian designed this. So um, it goes on like that, and then I'll be able to just thread the end because I want the most amount of room in here. I just want it to bite into the pen cert. There it is. So I just made it flush and I have the most amount of room, so I'll pull in that slack later when I get it on there. So, carriage is underneath and this is gonna ride like that. So these are M3 sixes. sixes. And there's two carriages, we put two on there one might have done it, but we wanted to make sure we had lots of rigidity on this X carriage. And then if we, if you guys opt to, to do a, uh, I'll just get these finger tight right now. If you guys opt to do a dual extruder, two carriages is perfect. We just replace the carriage with a dual mount. So I'm putting eight M36s on these carriage. They don't, uh, there's a, a couple millimeters in between the carriages so you gotta kind of spread them apart just a little bit. I was thinking over lunch, um, here it is, almost 1.30, uh, you know there's not a lot of technique involved, I'm really happy about that. I mean there's like technique on don't over tighten, um, you know, the, I mentioned the belts, uh, you know like the best scenario for like keeping things loose so you can thread through the holes and all that kind of stuff but beyond like that really basic stuff there's not a lot of technique when you're making metal you don't have to worry as much about over tightening like I remember with the wood parts um, some of those were finicky and hard to reach place, places these are all really easy to get to so that's that. Now, the, for the first time, we mount the extruder off of a vertical plate. So you have metal in between where the uh, extruder will go. We're going to ship with this Alu extruder, but let me show you how to put this thing together, if I can remember. Got the Delrin through the back. I will need this before I put it on. Let me do my spring. What size is that? This is the only 632 uh, nut on here. What size is the bolt? What length is that? 632 what? Inch and a half, something like that? Inch and a quarter, six, an inch and a half. I can't remember exactly what. Let me see. So, let's like this. Now, which one? There's a longer one on the top. The top. Okay, great. The and the reason this is longer than the normal instructions for your Alu extruder is because it has to go through this extra spacer here. I'm just going to hand tight that to hold it together just lightly. Oh, I forgot my uh, washer. I mean my uh, bearing. What What's the size of this guy? This is a, it's the only one M, that looks like that. M5, 16, M, M5, 16 millimeter. 16 millimeter. Did we, you know what, I do need a, oh here. This is not a full screwdriver, but instead of chucking it up, I'm just going to do that. All right, so that's there. This guy slides in. Now, uh, I love this. Two of these M3, help me out, 22? Yeah, two M3, 22. Is it, did I get the right ones? Uh, yes. Oh, the long one's on top already, so yeah, we're good. Yep. Now, I'm going to put one in. 
first. You know, as I look at this, Jeremy, um, I'm wondering if that's long enough. Oh yeah, it is. Okay. Good? Yeah, we're good. Nope. Okay, just strip it. I think I just stripped it. Alright, changed my mind on that bolt. Do you need 25? I think I do. I will get you. Give me one and let me try it. Again, this is the first time we've gone through this metal plate. I think what I did was I classically over tightened. Yeah, it's just spinning. So what I did was I ripped out the threads in my motor. I could rotate the motor one turn. Ah, but I like my wire coming off the right side as you look at the front. So I'll wait for him to bring up. Now the reason we don't put the screw in the other side is because we're actually going to be putting the hot end through and I like to get the hot end up in there before putting the screw in. I'm, gonna, I'm curious if this will bite. It does. So I ruined the threads on that one there. It could have been an old motor I was using. As you tighten this, got that out of the way. As you tighten this, again, one of only two Phillips head screws, and they're both in the extruder. Make sure you're in the hole there. You know what? I got to get the M25 in there, M325 in there first. All right, so let's let me make sure this tightens well because if we're in between sizes, that's a long way. No, but it didn't push it out. Good. So let's go with that. Uh, you didn't get me two. The other one bit. Oh, you did get me two. Let me try that. All right, so let's edit that file. Now, when you, before you tighten this, you might want to rotate the wires. So that just needs to go all the way to the top. You like that? And I like it. Okay. Yep, that's perfect. Yeah, okay, so get rid of these two. And it's an inch and a half, 632. Are those the right ones? Did I give you the right ones? Yep. Throw those away. I'm sorry, say again, inch and a half. Inch that's and a half. 632. Yep. So uh, what happens is when you tighten this, you want to get that nut. I like to bring it pretty much to the top. And even though I had preloaded this drive gear, what you can do to see if you're aligned properly which I am most definitely not. I guess I never did align that. You want to get the grooves on your, the, you know, the bite, the teeth, lined up exactly with where the filament will go down. So look down this hole, speaking of technique. So that looks really good. If we would have tried to run this, it wouldn't have worked. It wasn't on the teeth. And there is a flat on that motor, so you want the set screw right where the flat is, and that's one that you probably want to do some Loctite, which we don't send. So good luck with that. All right, I'm going to throw the sensor on here. This is just a preliminary mounting of the sensor. I just knocked off the bottom. And you, <coughs> excuse me, roughly, um, whoops. Roughly you want it about a millimeter above the end of the tip. And so the technique on finding the right height is detailed in another video. Oh, you know what? That is not tight yet. You know what? I don't think that's going to be. Oh, no, it is tight. Get back out of the way. That's good and tight now. Let me see if it back out. I don't think it did. If it did, I don't know. We have to look at that. I don't think it did. Um, if it did, I, ha I can't see it with my eyes. All right, so anyway, uh, there are two wooden wrenches there. Once you find the right height, and that's another process, you'll use those two wrenches. Now, uh, while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and throw these wires on it. This is the thermistor 
power and the hot end. Um, they're they're uh, black connectors instead of the white. They only fit on these cables. So you can't really go wrong. The thermistor happens to be the white one. It's a little tight in there. <clears throat> okay. Now, I don't want to go through a whole bunch of zip ties because a lot of times we'll put a sheathing on this so you don't want to overdo, but I like to, uh, right where this motor wire, I, I positioned it from the front to the right, and that's a perfect place to zip all of these. Now, there's one thing we're not going to be able to show here because I didn't even think about it till now. The fan shroud. Mark, our printer, and designed up a fan shroud. And uh, when that fits under here, it actually goes on... Um, two of these here. I forget if it's the front or the back. The back two fits in here, so we might need a longer screw there. Mm -hmm. But when it mounts, uh, you'd want to plug in that extension wire, bring it around the front, up in between the sensor and the hot end, and then back with this bundle of wires, and then you can zip it all together. 